start with a, um, by referring to a Pueblo Chieftain article, just excerpts of it, not because you need me to read you press stories, but because it sets the story I'm about to tell you. Um, and assisted, this is from August 16th, 2019. So unfortunately, uh, not very long ago, this isn't in the distant past. Um, an assisted living facilities license to operate has been suspended by the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment's Facilities Division following an investigation into seri a series of complaints. Certified as an alternative care facility under Medicaid, the Johnson Homes owners and operators are Paul Spicola and Alan Spicola, named as respondents in state action. In all, 14 deficiencies were discovered, including failure to provide personal services and protective oversight to meet the needs of two residents suffering from severe mental illness. And in doing so, failing to provide a physically safe and sanitary environment affecting all 19 of the residents. One of the residents who had been refusing his psychotropic medications for more than a year became violent and aggressive and is said to have started several fires inside and outside of the home. Despite this, the resident was not regularly monitored and continued to have access to a lighter and was even allowed to smoke in his room. While on site, state officials observed that 10 out of 10 residents taking monitored morning medications had one or more medications out of stock and unavailable. The resident that did not receive his medication for over a year and was starting fires clearly a danger to himself and others, is named Paul Jimenez. I'm writing a life summary that no family member should ever have to write. The events listed below are reflective of a very broken system, ineffective laws, unethical treatment and neglect, and a family that was completely unable to act. Paul was born in Pueblo to loving parents and a great support system. He was diagnosed as a teen with paranoid schizophrenia and became destined to a life of society's most fragile. For decades, Paul did well. He even worked at the steel mill. He lived on his own. He had a turtle and took care of the turtle. Um, but after many years, we decided that the best place for him would be an assisted living home in Pueblo and we moved him into the Johnson house. He's very musically gifted and able to play multiple instruments, self-taught um, and pa with, with great passion. His really only possession as of today is his guitar. In the Johnson house, he moved in in early 2000, and it was funded through both his social security disability and his Medicaid payments. With the passing of my grandparents, our ability to influence Paul completely diminished. I don't know if it was my grandpa's charm or great looks, or maybe the fact he was 6'3 and that he carried the title of dad. But as, when, with his passing, we lost our ability to influence Paul to take his medication. As an adult, even when with a very serious mental illness diagnosis, Paul has full rights to make all decisions for himself. And all of his data and information falls under the protections of both HIPAA and 42 CFR Part 2. Although he doesn't suffer from substance abuse, he's typically treated in facilities that provide both. For weeks, months, and years, we reached out to the Johnson House every week for a status update. Each time we were given the same answer, that they were not able to provide any information to us without consent, and Paul was not interested in signing that over to us. He did sign, and with the year's expiration, would not sign again, and we lost all control. We ca called every week and were repeatedly told that they were calling the police on Paul because he was starting fires, but the police would show up, and of course he hadn't committed a crime, so they would leave. We asked them and begged them to call a crisis response team. They told us they did, although the crisis response team in Pueblo claims they never received any calls. Up to, um, well, according, let me back up for just a second. The, he was even under a court order that required him to take medication, which is what kept him fairly under control but that court order was allowed to expire. Although there was a psychiatric note from a psychiatrist saying he was clearly a danger to himself and others. The Johnson house where he lived believed that Health Solutions was responsible for his behavioral health care. Health Solutions felt that Paul had said that he no longer wanted the care, so they weren't providing it. As a family, neither entity would talk to us or help us through the process. On August 15th, Catholic Charities called us to tell us that the Johnson house had been closed. That, you'll notice the dates. It was, so the Johnson House was closed early August. We weren't told until August 15th. After dozens of calls to Adult Protective Services, to the single entry point, to jails, to hospitals, to the morgue, we couldn't find Paul. He was gone. 
The only thing the Johnson house would tell us was that someone had taken him and that we needed to get there to pick up his clothes and his belongings, including his guitar, because if not, they'd be put out on the street with the loss of their license. We picked up his clothes um, and continued to call through every and any entity we could find in Pueblo. Eventually, we found the single entry point through, um, which is through the Department of Social Services in Pueblo, and they were at least able to tell us they believed he was at um, Health Solutions. Recent weeks have focused on us trying to track down Paul, get him in a, under a mental health hold, and get him transferred to Highlands Medical up, up here in Denver. It's been a painful process, and we've really tried hard to get guardianship and have an emergency filing in place, as that's our only option. It's unimaginable to, unimaginable to me that as a family we've gone through this just to try to find our loved one and try to get him the care. Although society doesn't own outcomes for people, I feel like we're, we are responsible for making sure that the most vulnerable of our population receive the most critical of care. I'll skip all the statistics and get to the four things that I actually think would make a difference. We really need to look at restoring the number of psychiatric hospital inpatient beds in the state of Colorado. Each time we requested that he be sent back to Simhep or to Fort Logan, we were told that the wait list was extremely long, more than 20 people right now at Fort Logan, and that because of his acuity and him not hurting anyone yet, that he had no chance of getting there. Although I know many years ago the bed numbers were triple that and that we have an entire empty wing at Simhip right now that has nothing in it, no beds, but no funding, we have people sitting in jail cells and not in mental health facilities because we are unable to fund it. I was a budget director with the state of Colorado and I understand the constraints on the general fund. I also understand that putting in roads and funding childhood education is very important. I don't want us to lose sight of the fact that there's another population that might be smaller but needs us even more. We need to review our state statutes to require that or allow for families to also request um, inpatient holds or involuntary medication. Right now, my uncle can only be forced to take medication if a psychiatrist submits that as a court order. The problem is he refuses treatment of a psychiatrist, which causes an, a circle that you just can't get out of. He won't sign up to go to a psychiatrist and I can't do anything if a psychiatrist doesn't say he needs to. Um, CRS 27, 65, 107, and 108 should be modified to allow for families to submit for those types of requests. Colorado should also create a statute allowing for assisted outpatient treatment, along with many other states. It's ridiculous that we don't have that in place to really help the people who need it. And care coordination efforts really need to be stepped up. This, this week alone, I've talked to a caseworker from Highlands, Department of Social Services, Long-Term Care, Adult Protective Services, the Department of Public Health and Environment to try to get any records I can, two facilities in Denver, Health Solutions in Pueblo, and a new facility in Colorado Springs just to try to get him out of a mental health hold and into a location. Um, wouldn't it be nice if I had a single person I could be working with through this time of crisis? I would end by saying, what if we stopped talking about making a difference and we rallied to make a difference? What if Colorado had enough beds? Sorry, it's been a rough couple weeks. <laughs> what if family could actually help? What if Paul Federico Jimenez was your uncle or your son or your father? Thank you.